Jersey with cocktails can either make or break your night. This is so true. So we've invited our favorite friend of the show, Haley Hamilton Cogill, to help us figure out what drinks to both order and serve on New Year's Eve. So help us, what should we be doing on New Year's to make it extra special? Well, you gotta have some good bubbles, obviously, to start, and then did bring a few kind of fun cocktails um, in the, the grape theme as well. But we're gonna start, and what we have in our glass is a new product from uh, Domaine Chandon in Napa Valley. It's their Delice, and it's a, it's a, a slightly sweeter kind of bubble. They're, they're kind of known to have very, very dry, brute kind of style. This one's a little bit sweeter, which would make it a perfect bubble to start a night, mix it with some fun cocktails. Okay. Also, if you're pairing like Thai food, a lot of people, you know, are doing Chinese food or Thai food or, or um, spicy Mexican food because just the fruitiness, because it does have a really nice fruit forward palette, is going to pair really nicely with that spice. Also would be great with creme brulee or with some soft Ooh. cheese or something like that with dessert. So it's kind of a bubble that can just start. Just perfect New Year's Eve wine. Absolutely. From any, you know, from start to finish. So it's a really, really special one. Like I said, they just introduced it. So it's just being rolled out now. It's about $20. Um, complete opposite mm. side of the spectrum. It's really nice, really it's light, really just lovely. Um, opposite side of the spectrum is from Domaine Carneros. This is their Ultra Brut, which basically is their very, very dry um, brute wine that they they don't use a lot of additional sugar in after that second fermentation. We call it dosage in, in the wine world. They don't use a, a high percentage of that dosage, so it actually keeps the freshness and the crisp acidity of the wine present without without kind of weighing it down. Um, it is aged nicely, so you do get some of those brioche yeasty kind of notes, but really, really fresh crisp green apple, lemon, those kind of fresh notes that we love in a, in a good bottle. That one's about $38. And what would this pair well with? Um, I would say if you're doing shellfish, lobster, um, again, just as a great opener, kind of awake the palate, the, that sort of thing. Really beautiful, great little bubble. I love this. Probably my favorite one from that particular um, winery in Napa Valley. Um, if you want to go something really special, Moet um, and traditional Moet out of Champagne, they they release a handful of vintage. It has mm -hmm. to be a really special wine or a special year for them to actually do a vintage Champagne. This is their 2006. Came out earlier this year. Really, really special. Aged for a lengthy period of time, so you do get those kind of toasty and vintage brioche. champagne does taste so much different it, it does it's instead of um kind of a house style where they traditionally in a non-vintage bubble you um you you blend through several years to kind of maintain that that house style whereas a vintage champagne that is just fruit from that particular year and it really is supposed to highlight how special that that year was so really beautiful wine and obviously you know having a great traditional champagne is always appropriate for any occasion. Um, my last bubble this is, bottle I, is just gorgeous. the presentation is beautiful. It's the, the Beaujoli um, Brut Reserve. It's a, a traditional champagne from France and I just, you know, it means beautiful joy and they're just the, the copper packaging of it is gorgeous. It's meant to kind of resemble the armor that medieval knights in France wore back in the day. Um, but then the inside you have this beautiful rosé um, very dry, but lots of strawberry and watermelon and and kind of crisp, layered of, of lemon cream kind of notes. Really special bubble, and, and like I said, just the presentation. I don't know anyone who would throw that bottle yeah, away. Keep the bottle, put it's on your so, bar, put exactly, some flowers in it. Exactly, it's so pretty. Um, did bring you a couple cocktails again with kind of a grape base. I don't know if you've ever had Pisco, but Pisco is actually um, the, the spirit of Peru. Um, they they make it from a tra from eight different grape varieties distilled in a kind of traditional way. It's been made in, in Peru for over 400 years. Wow. Pisco Porton is is kind of the oldest um, winery in the Amer or oldest distil distillery in the Americas. Made us two different cocktails. What we have in our martini glass is kind of a, a Pisco sidecar, which basically mixed a little Cointreau, a little lemon, a little lime, Ooh. a little simple syrup. It's a little margarita e absolutely. Flavor. And that's then the other one is is a pisco sour, which is something that we do see a lot of. That's your kind of I love pisco sour. and and lots of lime, a little um, egg white to just kind of give it that froth. There, um, mm. I like pisco because it doesn't have a bite. It's nice and rich and creamy, but it's still nice and elegant. So if you're say a gin drinker or a vodka drinker, this would be a great alternative and obviously a really special one. So enjoy your new year. Perfect. Well, I want to cut to commercial so I can finish <laughs> all three of these and Absolutely. I will not be able to do table talk at the end. <laughs> cheers. Well, cheers. Happy new year. Happy new year.
For these recipes and more, check out Haley's website. That's dallasuncorked.org. And some exciting news, Haley will be back on Wednesday to show us some amazing mocktails for you DDs. Stay tuned for more broadcasts.